AJ, where are you? Asher. Didn't we have a bass player? Yeah, where's our bass player? Look, he's running all over. <laughs> stand and worship the living God this morning. Letting go of every single dream. I lay each one down at your feet. Every moment of my wandering never changes what you For I confess, my hands are weary, I need your rest. Mighty warrior, king of the fight, no matter what I face, you're by my side. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could. This morning, Lord, may you fill this place, Lord, and may we give you all the praise, glory, and honor today. In your precious name we pray, amen. You may be seated in his presence, all except for Terry Tilton. Where's Terry Tilton? Is Terry Tilton, was he, was he here? Is he here? Is he still gnawing on pizza? Where's Terry? <laughs> Terry! Where you get Terry Tilton in here? We're going to pray for him. So, we put people in the doghouse because uh, we like to pray for people. 
but it's always about, uh, based on a sermon about my dog, because uh, I used to work a third shift job, and, and uh, I was pastoring a church and going through seminary, so you can imagine I was a very busy guy, but there would be times I'd be pretty moody, <laughs> kind of tired, especially coming home from working all night in a third shift job. I'd come home, and I'd open my door, and there's my dog. His tail's wagging, his eyes as big as a baseball. He's just happy to see me, wanting to love on me. I'd nap for a while, and take, take a snooze, and I'd wake up a few hours later, bad breath and messed up hair. And there's my dog, just wanting to jump on me, love on me. I'd go check the mail. I'd put on my dress shoes with my shorts, and I'd walk down the driveway. Guess where my dog is? Right next to me, wanting to love on me, jump up on me. And it hit me. The Lord really spoke to me. Bam! Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if we had a church like that that just dogged you? A church that just loved you. It didn't matter what kind of mood you were in. It didn't matter if you had messed up hair and bad breath. We were just going to love you. Wouldn't it be great to belong to a church that just dogged you and loved you? And so that's why we have the doghouse every week. This week we're going to dog Terry. Terry, I can see him. Yeah. If he could only make his way up here. Terry Tilton, come on down. You're the next contestant in the doghouse. Because the church loves you, wants to pray for you. And you're, you're walking the wrong way, Terry. You're walking the wrong way. I see a bandage on your head. Has it affected your brain? Come on, brother. <laughs> So I know Terry's got a lot going on in his life. You're in the process of finally getting your house in order. Literally getting your house built. Go ahead, tell us all about it, brother. They got the roof covered with the paper, and then once they uh, dries out, I guess they'll put the shingles on. Okay. Then they'll go inside and start working on the inside. All right. It's been a process, hasn't it? Lord's timetable. On the Lord's timetable. And how long has the Lord asked you to be patient? Well, the hurricane was from uh, 2017. 2017, and we're finally getting around to building your house back. And they tore the old house down in February 22. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to come on over here, brother. We're going to keep praying for you. How else might we pray for you? Well, we're just, I'm doing okay. I mean, just minor uh, cancer, cancer situations. Are you receiving your radiation treatment yet? Or you have to, this has to heal, and then they can start some radiation treatment. So you're waiting for this to heal, and then you're going to get some radiation? Yeah. Okay, that's how that's going to work. All right. Anything else? Not pretty much doing it help with Connie, my wife, that she gets more coherent, and she'll be able to get around more when we do get into the house. All right. So that's one of your objectives is to get the house so that you can get Connie back too, right? Back, you guys can be together because she's in a she's in assisted living right now, right? right? All right. Hey, as a church family, let's just dog them, right? We're gonna pray for them. Let's let's pray. Father, we just want to come before you and uphold our dear brother, Father, and pray that you might continue the good works that you've already begun in this man's life. And Father, I thank you that you gave him great endurance and patience. And Father, and a calmness through the midst of the aftermath of a hurricane that took down his house. And Father had the process of rebuilding. And so, Father, I thank you that he has continued to seek you, honor you, love you, and Father, continue to walk with you. And Father, and through that whole scenario, he's been very attentive to his wife, Connie. And so, Father, I would pray for the both of them. I would pray for their marriage. I pray that the bonds of love that exist continue to flourish and strengthen and grow. And Father, I would pray that they're able to move into that house together. Wouldn't that be a miracle, Father? I would pray that you might do miraculous things in their lives, that you would receive all honor and glory. I pray for Terry's physical well-being as well, Father, that his head would heal, and, Father, that even the radiation treatments do what they're supposed to do, and, Father, that he is a restored man, Father, living in a house with his wife, and, Father, I pray that you would continue to work out all things for your honor and for your glory in the name of your Son. Amen. All right, what else we got going on? We got, oh, you want to say something or you're just like, I'm just, I'm laying hands on the man. I'm just laying hands on the man. Okay. All right. Well, uh, it's the end of February. March is going to be Friendship Month. 
Uh, so we got that going on. We can describe a little bit about that, what's gonna, what that's going to be. Friendship Month is uh, uh, <clears throat> what, what ends up happening is people on this side of the congregation don't necessarily know the people on this side of the congregation because you're all very temperamental about where you sit. You are pretty much sit always. So just so you know, this is how I pray for you. I actually can envision just going up and down the rows and praying for people, right? And so <clears throat> what we try to do with March and Friendship Month is that we try to open it up so that uh, you can invite someone out for some coffee that you don't necessarily know, but you know them from church. You see them in church, and it doesn't feel weird because the church is asking you, hey, would you please meet some other folks in the church? Maybe you just have an opportunity to have some coffee together. Invite them over to the house for dessert, whatever you want to do. Would you do that so that the church isn't all just about eyeballs on me, but that the church together gets a little tighter in unity? Okay. So it's your part to participate in trying to do that. And uh, don't cheat, meaning what does that mean? That means if you have coffee with somebody like all the time, every week, all the time, every week, all the time, every week, that's very simple. Somebody you don't quite know or haven't spent a lot of time with. Follow me? All right. So the church is asking you, hey, make some friends in church. It's okay. And we're going to try to promote a little bit. All right? Anything else? We're all good? In the meantime, hey, check this out. dismissed and in the meantime why don't we just get up and get to know each other a little bit better this morning
This is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain, I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus.
trust in you alone and I will not be shaken praise glory and honor to you and all that you've done and all the good works you continue to do for the good of your people the good of your kingdom bring your kingdom here lord we seek you we want you lord bring your holy spirit in here may we feel it holy spirit just empower your church today jesus dwell in the hearts of your church those who believe, may we be a blessing. Guide us, Lord, to 
those who are lost and seeking you. Lord, may we love them. May we dog on them, Lord. And we thank you for all that you've done. All our hope is in you, Jesus. And together we say, Amen. so very much for the way in which you work in our lives. It's meant to be opened, explored, pursued. It's made to be read, reread, applied, and used. The sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, with wisdom life-changing to lead us on. It's made for guidance, to teach us His ways, showing what's true, right, and worthy of praise. It's meant to be hidden deep in our hearts, daily examined as the morning starts. No greater glimpse of God do we have, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Proverbs 30, 1 through 9. The sayings of Agar, the son of J.K., an inspired utterance, this man's utterance to Ethel. I'm weary, God, but I can prevail. Surely I am only a brute, not a man. I do not have human understanding. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I attained to the knowledge of the Holy One who has gone up to heaven and come down. Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Whose hands have gathered up the wind? Who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is the name of his son? Surely you know. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words, or he will rebuke you and prove you a liar. Two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God.
We're continuing on in our, uh, our core values, and so we've covered uh, lost people, they matter to God, we've covered prayer, we've covered stewardship, everything belongs to God, we are only his steward. Today we're going to talk about God's word, and so this value is knowing, it's your first slide, knowing and obeying God's word is fundamental to all true success, knowing and obeying God's word is fundamental to all true success. Anybody ever served on jury before? Anybody over here ever served on a jury? Maybe you just got called to jury duty? Yeah, got called to jury duty. Excellent. All right. All right. Melinda seems to have a lucky number. She's been called like twice as many times as I have. The last time I showed up, there were 145 people that showed up. They whittled it all down to 25 and then I was released. But that was still all day, right? Has anybody ever pick, been picked to serve on the jury? Been picked to serve on a jury. So then you've reached a verdict. You know what it is to reach a verdict with whatever, maybe sometimes there's six, sometimes there's 12, depending upon the case. All right. The last time I served on a jury of 12 people, it was for a civil case. And so, listened intently, as you're supposed to. And when the prosecuting attorney spoke and shared all the evidence that they would prove beyond any reasonable doubt that the incident took place and it was the negligence was a factor, and I was absolutely convinced that the person was guilty. Until the defense attorney spoke and presented their different side of the story and the charges against them were unfounded and exaggerated and you could well imagine I was absolutely convinced that they were innocent. <laughs> After listening to both sides, completely lost, inadequate about truth, how could they both make such a case for innocence and guilt and be equally as convincing? And I wanted to make the right decision. I didn't want to rush to a verdict and just be in agreement with everybody so I can get home to dinner. I wanted to do my civil duty as a citizen. I wanted to do it well and do it right. And listen, when your time comes, I hope that you're a patriot. I hope that you serve. You do your part as a citizen. This is a very unique system in all of the world that they would ask you to participate in, and you should participate in. And we need more church people actually serving when they're called upon instead of skating and trying to find a way out. Well, there's your public service announcement for the day. Oh, next one, and I have another one. Listen, vote. Vote. You're not going to hear from me which side, this side better vote, vote this way, vote that way. What you're going to hear from me, vote. You have a right, vote. Be a patriot, be a citizen, vote. Yes. Right. Many of us at times will feel like a juror in a court case trying to decide on conflicting points of view. So it's, it's been happening a lot lately. I wake up in the morning. Melinda always wakes up before me. But I wake up and I come out into the living room and she's watching the people's court. Or she's watching a hot bench. She likes these court shows. And... There's nothing more that I like in the morning than, you know, some conflict, <laughs> some <laughs> disagreement, right? <clears throat> when we're, especially when we're trying to decide matters of not just justice and fairness and decency and morality and ethics, but when you're trying to decide faith, what, what, what am I going to believe and why? Especially in matters of faith. We'll all be required to make a decision, to arrive at a verdict for your own belief, what you believe and why. The decisions about your convictions, about truth, and what you base that truth on. And when that time comes for your own faith, what will you base it upon? Well, here's your next one. There's a base of wisdom. It's a base of wisdom. It's all about that base. That base, all right, that base. It's a different kind of base. The base of wisdom. 
And so listen, Palm Sunday's right around the corner. It's coming up. Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey. He's riding in fulfillment of the scriptures. See, your king comes riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, on a colt, on a foal of a donkey. All the crowds are yelling. It's fulfillment of scripture. He's declaring he's the Messiah. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace on, in heaven and glory in the highest. And, and the Pharisees are yelling out, Jesus, you need to rebuke these people You see, at some point, you're going to have to make a decision. Most of this crowd within a week would be yelling, not praise him and Hosanna. They'd be yelling, crucify him. Talking about fickle. Talk about shifting sands of faith and belief. And listen, Jesus has heard all of this before. He's heard all the rationale about your disbelief. He's heard all the rationale and the justifications for your sin. He's heard all the reasons why you reject his gifts. You see, at some point, you just have to draw a conclusion. Did God become flesh? Is Jesus Emmanuel? Is Jesus the Messiah? Are there spiritual forces in the world... Jesus said he was the Messiah. Jesus said he's coming again. Jesus said he came to save the world from sin, not to condemn the world. It's already condemned. He came to save people from the condemned world. Jesus would say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father except through me. You're going to have to draw a verdict at some point. See, there's your next slide. See, some people will praise him. Some people will say, crucify him. Which one are you? The Bible gives a lot of basis for wisdom. It gives a lot of basis for belief. It gives a lot of basis for success in life. I've chosen a long time ago to base my beliefs on the Bible, on Jesus My foundation rests in the scriptures. It did not always. Many years, you know, money was the motivating factor. You have to be somebody to be successful, and you have to have title and career and sex, and the more sex and the more women, and that's success, and the more houses and the more cars. See, at some point, you have to make a determination about what is true success and what is motivating you toward doing what it is you do, why you believe that which you believe. See, now the establishment of my life will be found securely based on the biblical foundations. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is shifting sand. And you can always hear the other side. You can hear my testimony and say, Hallow, praise pray to God, he found Jesus. But there's another side too, right? Conflicting report. A different perspective. A worldly view. And it can make pretty good sense sometimes and cause you to doubt, cause you to question, particularly even the things that Jesus says. Simple example would be that the world would tell you there are many ways to heaven. They would claim there are many ways to salvation. Well, are there many ways? What do you believe? And what do you base that belief on? on. Many will tell you it doesn't matter what you believe, just believe. Jesus is one of many ways. Jesus is one of the many religious figures. He's a, he's a teacher and a prophet, right along with you know, Hinduism and many gods, and Muhammad, the one true prophet, Buddhism, the path to enlightenment. There is no God. I mean, just study the science. You can hear compelling reports from the other side. But you'll have to draw a conclusion. You'll have to come to a verdict. You will hail him as Messiah or crucify him as a fraud. You decide. So, will you choose Jesus or not choose Jesus? See, and the reality is there is no DMZ. It's a demilitarized zone. There is is no middle ground. 
There is no lukewarm Christian. You must render a verdict. So are there anybody or people in here like me that have chose Jesus? Anybody? Give me an amen. amen. Well, that, that's not very enthusiastic, but anybody in here choose Jesus? Give me an amen. amen. So you're telling me you choose Jesus, Gene. You're telling me you choose Jesus. You're telling me you want to be a disciple, Christian? You're telling me you want to be a disciple, Judy? You're telling me you're a disciple of Jesus, honey? That's what you're telling me, Shirley. You choose Jesus. See, either you'll vote for him or you'll vote against him. And there's your next slide. See, and if you choose not to decide, you still made a choice. You still made a choice. Undecided is a vote. Not, con not rendering a verdict is rendering a verdict. So in your collection of vast experiences and worldly knowledge, where do you base your wisdom? The latest TV program? Or your own intelligence? Well, that's just the way I grew up. That's what my daddy taught me, so that's what I know. Well, my mama always said, so that's what I do. Where do you gather your evidence? Where's your base? Who, or what, invades this precious little mental cavity you call a brain? What do you allow to influence, or what does influence your brain? My, my neighbor says Jesus is not God, so I believe my neighbor, there must be no God. Hmm. My coworker says, you know, all roads lead to heaven. There is no hell. Okay. My father-in-law said, God will forgive all of us anyway. Just live how you want to live. Have you implemented some of the world into the basis of your faith? Into the fundamental belief of your faith? Have you become a a relativist. Everything's relative. It's your truth. You make it your reality. It's like there's no absolute truth, and that is absolutely true. I'll let you catch up. <laughs> Do you think the Bible is one of many truths? Are you beginning to doubt Jesus and believe the world? See, Agor knew he didn't know anything. He knew he didn't know everything. He knew this. He believed in the word of God. I trust in the word of God. Amidst all inadequacies, doubts, confusions, and limitations, amidst all the religions and all the stories, where do you get clarity? Where do you gain wisdom? Where do you base all of your fundamental beliefs and therefore the way in which you live upon. Well, here's your next one. How do you gain understanding? Gaining understanding. Isn't that a beautiful picture of a Bible? May I suggest that the holy word of God, knowing and obeying the word of God, would be fundamental to all true success? The firm foundation of life begins right in the scriptures. Right in his presence. Who are you going to believe in the courtroom of your faith? This chapter in Proverbs gives answers to when faced with decisions about faith. We don't know much about Agor. Maybe we can assume he's wise. A wise man says he doesn't know everything. Surely I am a brute, not a man. I do not have human understanding, nor have I learned wisdom. I have not obtained the knowledge of the Holy One. I don't understand human beings. Anybody else? Anybody at all? See, you can relate to Agor. I don't get what they're thinking. I do not understand why people do the things that they do. I don't understand people. I certainly cannot understand God. Right out of the gate, he's talking about his own inadequacies and lack of heavenly knowledge. 
How can a wise man claim to have no wisdom? He recognizes his own intelligence is inadequate before God. That God is the one with the true wisdom. And the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Where are you looking? Where are you seeking? What's infecting your brain? From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. And if someone tells you they know it all, well, you can be sure that they are not wise and that they do not know it all. Those that say they know it all are very frustrating to those of us who do. (laughs) Stay with me, folks. Try and keep up. Then he asks five questions. Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Whose hands have gathered up the wind? Who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is the name of his son? The answer to each of those questions, of course, is God knows. God has come down and gone up again. God knows the wind and the seas. God knows the material boundaries of the earth and the galaxies. Agar is pointing out God's greatness. Agar is drawing his conclusion that God is the Holy One. And he knows, and only he knows. And he's who I trust and believe and consult. Not the world. I don't understand people. And who is his son? A little prophetic. There's Jesus. Agor longed to know this truth, to know the creator, to know the Messiah, to know Jesus. Jesus himself would say this. Truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. Agor could, could not look only at himself or mankind for answers. He He knew his own limitations. He knew mankind's limitation. But he knew God was limitless. And he knew where to place his trust in God. To know that you don't know is really kind of the beginning of knowing. Then you seek. But where do you seek? And where do you look? Jesus would say this. It's most profound. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. He'll go on. My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I am going there, but I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You can believe that or not. You draw a conclusion. You draw a verdict. See, I can't hold all the world's rationale in my brain. I, I, can't, I can't draw a you know, defense, prosecution. Everybody's got good arguments when you look at people. But where are you going to place your faith? Is Muhammad the one? Buddha the way. Certainly Hinduism with multiple gods in multiple ways. I have to come to a place where I can rest my heart and rest my mind. So, I conclude, wherever Jesus is, in all of eternity, that's where I want to be. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you will also be where I am. I choose Jesus for all of eternity. Can you trust Jesus with your soul? Can you trust him with your soul and your eternal life? But then can you trust him in your relationships? Can you trust him in your church? Can you trust him with your bank account? Can you trust him with your career choices? You want success? Seek Jesus. You want to deepen your faith and your understanding? Get to know Jesus. You want answers? Seek Jesus. Resolve it in your mind. Draw the conclusion. Cast the vote. Make the verdict. Put an end to the shifting doubts. Land firmly and stand firmly upon the rock of Jesus Christ. 
and nowhere else. Land on the Word of God. What the Word of God says, not what my neighbor says, not even what I can conjure up in my own imagination, and I got a pretty good one. What the Word of God says, that's where we land. That's who we follow. I pray that you are not fickle like the crowds on a Palm Sunday, all loud and honoring Christ and their words and their hearts are far from Him. Crowds with their own agendas. When He doesn't do the things you think He should do, you turn on Him. When He doesn't say the things you think He should say, you reject Him. You skip church. You just pass out. You move away. You go away. I hate people. I don't understand people either. But I don't sacrifice my God because of people. God came for people. Where do you base your faith on what and on who? God is sufficient. Trust him and him alone. All my hope is in Jesus. I hope you're singing that all day long, right? Even when you don't move the mountains that I want you to move, I will trust in you. See, within his word, there's sufficient knowledge. Here's your next one. There's sufficient knowledge. Is the word of God enough? Is the word of God enough? Is it enough for this church? Do we need more of the word of God? Do we need more words from Jesus? Do we need more than an example of Christ? Is the word of God enough? How do you know if your preacher is preaching the word of God? How do you know if your church is moving towards secularism and relativism and adopting worldly views? How would you know if your church is more interested in popularity than that which is sacred? How would you know that? How would you even begin to diagnose some of that or render a verdict? Well, probably like understanding that which is counterfeit. The best way to recognize that which is false is to know what's true. You with me? To know what is truth, to know what the Word of God says. If you know the Word of God, then when someone speaks out, opposed to it or outside of it, you know, and you can render a verdict. See, here's your next slide. The only way to recognize the lie, to know the truth. The only way to recognize false teachings is to know what true teaching looks like and sounds like. It steps on your toes sometimes, and you feel uncomfortable in church because the spirit of conviction is upon you. The Holy Spirit is alive and well. Don't run from it. Embrace him. Draw him close. He wants the best for you. If you hear that the Bible is not Holy Spirit inspired, well, then you know that they have a worldly view about the passages that are being proclaimed. That they are not of God, they are of man. And if you hear that Jesus is not God, well, then that's not Scripture. You know that that's a worldly point of view. We believe the Scriptures to be the revealed truth of God, the basis of our wisdom and how we gain wisdom. And the Word of God is sufficient. When the authority of God's word is lost, man starts to creep in. Will you follow God's word or your neighbor? Will you follow God's word or will you follow the ways of the latest media poll? If you're teaching there is another way other than Jesus, you're not a Christian. You're a secularist. You're a humanist. You're a relativist. You're not a disciple of Christ. Just so you know that. If teaching what Jesus asked us to teach is too tough for you, then you've been influenced by the world and not by God. If you think attendance even at church is optional, then you've been influenced by the world and people. 
If you think attendance in church and fellowship is really kind of irrelevant, well, then you've been influenced by people in the world and not God. And you're becoming a secularist, a humanist, not a disciple of God. Because disciples of God do what Jesus asks them to do. Can I get a solid amen on that? Amen. Particularly those that would say, yes, I want to be a disciple of God, hallelujah. But do you do what he asks you to do? Do you say the things that he says? Or have you become lukewarm? Lukewarm. You are neither hot nor cold. And the scriptures are pretty clear. I will spit you out of my mouth. I wish you were either hot or cold. But you won't render a verdict. I'll still spew you out of my mouth. New Life Alliance, right here, we teach and preach the Word of God. As long as I'm standing behind the pulpit, we're landing on the Word of God, and the Word of God is sufficient, and the Word of God is enough. And this may not be popular with the secular world, but this world is not my home. Church is not the place to even begin to exercise your opinions. Church is not a civil club or a social group. Church exists to promote Jesus Christ and to teach the word of God. That's why we exist. To reach the lost, to edify the believer. That's it. That's it. That's what we do over and over and over again. We, ma we make disciples, we mature believers, and we multiply ministries over and over and over again. We make disciples, we mature the believers, and we multiply the ministries and the advancement of the kingdom of God over and over and over and over again. Why? That's what he asked us to do. Amen. I want to be a disciple of God. I don't want to follow the ways of the world. Agor petitions God for just enough. Have you ever prayed for just enough? Most of us have never been mm, strong enough to pray for just enough. It's always more, 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 more. Until you get more, 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 and then you realize those that have much, much is required, and you don't want the requirements. This is a wonderful prayer. Give me my daily bread. Sound familiar? That's how Jesus taught us to pray. Not too much. Unless I start to begin to feel that, you know, I got to steal. How's that go? Not too much lest he begin to feel he doesn't need God, nor too little that he would need to steal to dishonor God. Sometimes I think I have too much. Anybody else? Let me, let me ask you this. You have a house, apartment, does anybody else have a storage unit? You got so much stuff, you can't even keep it in your own location. You got to put it somewhere else. You got so much stuff. It has so much stuff, too much stuff. I just look in my closet at all the stuff I don't wear. Look at all the things in my shed that I don't use. I think sometimes I have too much. I pulled a jar out of the uh, refrigerator the other day from 2014. Apparently, I have not been hungry enough since 2014. I think God has been providing for me and for all of us in abundance. So much so that I don't even eat all the food that's in my house. I've stored up Pop-Tarts and popcorn for years. Listen, God is enough. His word is enough. His provision is enough. In fact, for most of us, it's overflowing. Can we trust that he will provide that which is enough? He is our sufficiency. He is our portion. He is our cup. He's our redeemer. He's our all in all. And with God, you can overcome the world. And with God, you can overcome temptations. And with God, you can learn the ways of Jesus Christ. And with God, you can overcome evil. You can defeat all your enemies. With God, you can prevail over this world and with all its schemes. And with God, you can beat back your own flesh, your own ideas, your own imaginations, and follow the Word of God and trust in the Word of God. 
With God, you can reconcile. You can even overcome your own hatred and your own prejudices and your own pride. With God, you can reign victorious. Walk and talk with confidence. Succeed over every circumstance. How do I know that God is real? Man, I've watched the faithful ones gain wisdom and gain insight. I've watched those that have remained faithful to him over the years travel through life with ease and peace amidst all of life's troubles and tragedies. They walk with a deep-seated joy and hope and peace. Hope never escapes them. Trust is always present in their lives. And faith is never failing on their behalf. I have watched the corrupt fall. I have seen the boastful and the prideful brought low. Not just humbled, humiliated. I know a thing or two. Here's your next slide. I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. And like maybe many of you in this room, you know a thing or two because you've seen a thing. And it deepens your walk, or does it make you question? Does it stabilize your faith and your hope and your trust, or do you run to the ways of the world because you think maybe man understands? I can pass a verdict because I have weighed the evidences of God's word to the words of others. I have watched God remain in control and supreme. I'm an eyewitness to the account of God that is alive. I have seen the miraculous healings and all the impossible become possible. I've watched God's word be fulfilled over time. My faith has been exposed to many things. I have seen that which is unseeable. I have heard that which is unhearable. And, you know, many times we say, well, well you know, well, well, I believe it when I see it. Or what's the seeing is believing, Right? And we always try to tell them, no, believing is seeing. And that is so true. That is the truth. When you start to believe, you will see it. When you start to trust, God moves. When you're walking the ways of the world and just kind of lukewarm with God, mm, mm, you're still a prodigal son way off in the pig slop somewhere. He's still waiting for you. He's still waiting for you. Your faith gets stronger when you have the eyes of Christ. You start believing, you start seeing. Knowing and obeying God's word is fundamental to all true success. You want a successful life? Get in the word of God. You want answers to life's toughest questions? Get in his word. You want direction and guidance for what you're supposed to do, where you're supposed to go, and all? get in his word. You want encouragement from God? Get in his word. You want victory in your life? Get in his word. Knowing his word and and not knowing his word will make all the difference in this world and the next. Get in his word. Know his word. Order in the court. Has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. What say ye? Guilty. Guilty is charged. Will the defendant rise before I pass sentencing? Any last words before I sentence you? Just one, Your Honor. Jesus. 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 I claim Jesus. I claim the blood of Jesus over all my sins, over all my guilt, over all my shame. I claim Jesus as my advocate. Just Jesus, Your Honor. Just Jesus. That's all I know. That's all I've ever known. Jesus, to wash me clean in the blood of Christ that I am forgiven. That's all I know. There will be order.
judgment for the defendant. All court costs and penalties paid in full by the blood of Jesus. You are free to go. You are free to go. You are free to go in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Pray. Somebody got to come pray. It's their elder. Eric, 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 come pray for us, brother. Amen, amen. How do I come wow. after that? Whew. Wow. It's warm in here. Very warm in here. Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor, for that message. As our elders come, or deacons, our ushers come forward to take this morning's tithes and offerings, just remember that um, the altar is open. The elders will be forward um, if anyone has a need that wants to come and, and pray. So as we're taking up the offering, if you feel led, come on forward. Let's pray together. Our God and Father, Lord, we come before you this morning, Lord. We've, we've heard your word, uh, Lord. We've prayed over your word. And Lord, now we ask that we would be doers of your word and that we would know what is truth and what isn't. In a time where artificial intelligence is so much about everything that you see or do, it's hard to tell what is truth and what isn't. And Lord, we just pray, God, that you would just help us to, to know, give us wisdom, give us knowledge. Um, give us knowledge from above, Lord, as, uh, as we try to seek you. And Lord, we just pray now for our tithes and offerings, Father. We pray for the gift and the giver, Lord. We just pray that it will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Stand with me, please. <clears throat> Elders are always up front. Be prayed if you desire to be prayed for or prayed over. <clears throat> we should specifically pray for Colin. He has a procedure this week as well. <clears throat> Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And you are free to go. Go. Serve your God. God bless you.